everyone and welcome to Reading with Mrs. Adams. I'm Mrs. Adams and today I have three books and two poems all about pigs. So we're back on the farm. The first book I'm reading today is called The Three Little Pigs. Now this is the golden book version of this classic fairy tale. And I know you're going to have fun with The Three Little Pigs. The Three Little Pigs. The Three Little Pigs, retold and illustrated by Yuri Saltzman. A Golden Book, New York. Once upon a time, there was a mother pig who had three little pig children. One day she said to them, It is time for you to go out into the world and make your fortune. The three little pigs packed their bags and said, Goodbye, to their mother. They left the house and each went along a different path. The first little pig soon met a man with a load of straw. Please, mister, will you give me some straw to build a house? The man did, and the little pig quickly built himself a straw house. It was not a very strong house, but the little pig was so happy that he began to dance and sing. Along came a hungry and wicked wolf who knocked at the door and called out in a gruff voice. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. The little pig grunted and answered, No, no, by the hair of my chinny chin chin, I will not let you in. You will be sorry, growled the wolf. I will huff and I will puff and I will blow your house in. So the wolf huffed, and he puffed, and he blew the house of straw right down. Then he ate up the first little pig. Now the second little pig walked along the path until he met a man with a load of twigs. Would you be so kind, sir, as to give me some twigs so I can build a little house? The man did and the little pig quickly built himself a house of twigs. It was not a very strong house, but the little pig was so happy that he began to dance and play his flute. Then along came the hungry and wicked wolf. He knocked at the door and called out in a gruff voice, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. The little pig grunted and answered, No, no, by the hair of my chinny chin chin, I will not let you in. You will be sorry, growled the wolf. I will huff and I will puff and I will blow your house in. So the wolf huffed and he puffed and he huffed and he puffed some more and at last he blew the house of twigs right down. Then he ate up the second little pig. The third little pig walked along until he met a man with a load of bricks. Please, sir, would you give me some bricks to build a house? The man did, and the little pig built himself a brick house. It took him a long time, but it was a lot stronger than a straw house or a house of twigs. The little pig was very happy. He sat down and played the piano and sang. Along came the hungry and wicked wolf. He knocked at the door and called out in a gruff voice, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. The little pig grunted and answered, No, no, by the hair of my chinny chin chin, I will not let you in. You will be sorry, growled the wolf. I will huff and I will puff and I will blow your house in. So the wolf huffed and he puffed and he huffed and he puffed again and again, but he could not blow the house in. 
The wolf got mad. Little pig, little pig, I will catch you anyhow. I'm going to climb up on the roof and come down the chimney and eat you up. Come down, said the little pig. Hurry up. The wolf came down the chimney and fell right into a pot of water boiling over the fire. The little pig quickly popped the cover over the pot, and that was the end of the wicked wolf. And the third little pig lived happily ever after in his house of bricks. And that is the end of the three little pigs. Our first poem today, boys and girls, is called, Please, it's about a little pig. Please, give me a pan where I can play. Give me some corn cobs to crunch on all day. Give me some squishy, cool mud I can dig. And I'll be a perfectly happy young pig. The next book I'm reading today, boys and girls, is called Pigs. And it's by Gail Gibbons. Now this is informational text loaded with lots of facts about pigs. I think you're going to find this very interesting and enjoyable. Pigs by Gail Gibbons. Pigs by Gail Gibbons, Holiday House, New York. For Larry Chasen, special thanks to Daniel J. Kelly, DVM of Stone Cliff Animal Clinic, Bradford, Vermont, and Joan, Ben, and Larry Whiting's Pigs of West Topsham, Vermont. Many people think pigs are smelly and dirty. They think pigs eat like pigs and aren't very smart. That's because they don't know pigs. A pig is also called a hog or a swine. The wild boar is the animal from which all domestic pigs descended. This is a wild boar. A tusk is a very long tooth used for digging and fighting. It is believed people started taming or domesticating pigs about 8,000 years ago. Often they were raised for food. People made things out of their hides too. There are about 300 different breeds of pigs, but all pigs have the same basic characteristics. They have a heavy, round, bristly skinned body with a round, flat nose called a snout. Pigs can use their snouts to dig up or root food out of the ground. Pigs have four toes on each foot. There is a hard hoof at the end of each toe. Only the two long middle hooves are used for walking. And of course, many pigs have wiggly, curly tails. So here's a close-up um, picture of the hooves. You see the two middle toes in the front. That's what they walk on. But there's two in the back that um, they don't use for walking. Um, here's their back, their neck, the ear, the eye, the snout, the nostrils, the mouth. Here's a leg, the toe, and then the hoof is at the tip of the toe. And of course, the little curly tail. Before a female has babies, called piglets, she is called a gilt. After she has babies, she is called a sow. Some sows can weigh up to 400 pounds or 180 kilograms. This is a gilt. It's a female pig before she's had any babies. And this is a sow. And of course, she has her little piglets. Male pigs are called boars. Some can weigh 900 pounds or 405 kilograms or more. And this is the boar. Some common breeds of pigs. A breed is a group of animals that share many traits. Pigs differ in size and color. Each breed has some special characteristics. Here's a land race pig, a Gloucester old spot pig, a Tamworth pig, a Hampshire pig, 
Durick pig, Berkshire pig, Chester white pig, and a Poland china pig. Pigs are the smartest of all farm animals. Some scientists believe they are smarter than dogs. They can be taught to do many tricks. Some pigs come when they're called. Others follow their owners around just like dogs. They can even be taught to roll over, retrieve, and pull a cart. Pigs are tidy creatures and would much rather be clean all the time. Pigs should be given a clean place to live with a pond or tub of water available. When it gets too hot, pigs need to moisten their skin or they will get sick. They need to roll around in water to lower their body temperature. This is called wallowing. If there is no fresh water available, they will become desperate and wallow in sloppy, wet mud. Oink! Pigs make sounds to communicate. They make grunting sounds to show pleasure or give warning. Sometimes they make woeful cries when they're unhappy. When they are distressed, they make shrill squeals. It's grunting, squealing. <laughs> pigs have good hearing. They have small eyes and poor eyesight. Some pigs have beautiful long eyelashes. You can see his little eyelashes right there. Pigs have a very good sense of smell. A pig's snout is made up of tough cartilage covered with tiny sensitive pores. The snout is used as a scenting organ and a digging tool. In France, some people use pigs to locate and dig up an unusual food called truffles. Here's a close-up picture of the snout. Farmers feed their pigs corn, cereal grains, and soybean meal. Pigs love table scraps too. Pigs don't eat like pigs. They only eat as much as they need. Another word for um, table scraps is called slop. When there are only a few pigs, farmers keep them in styes, also called pig pens. Here's a, an example of a sty or a pig pen. When there are lots of pigs, they are kept outside in a field that has little huts called arcs. Sometimes they are kept in huge air-conditioned buildings. Here's an example of an ark. A boar and gilt must be at least six months old to mate. The female farrows or gives birth to a litter of six to 15 piglets. Each weighs about three and a half pounds or 1.5 kilograms. At this time, each piglet's two tiny and sharp needle teeth, also called wolf teeth, are cut so the piglets won't injure each other or their mother. Right away, they begin drinking their mother's milk. For the first three weeks, the piglets completely depend on their mother for food. When they begin to stop nursing, they are weaning. The piglets begin to copy the way their mother eats. They may root with their tender, tiny pink snouts, foraging for food. They also begin to eat the food the owners bring. Pigs grow more quickly than any other kind of farm animal. When the piglets are about six weeks old, they are weaned and weigh about 35 pounds or 15.7 kilograms, 10 times more than what they weighed at birth. By the time they are six months old, they will be really heavy, about 200 pounds or 99 kilograms. Most pigs are raised to go to market to become food for people to eat. Their hides may be used to make things such as gloves. These are the parts of the pig that we eat, the shoulder, the fat back, the loin, the ribs come from here, bacon, and the ham. Some pigs never go to market. They may be kept as family pets or for showing.
What fun it is to go to a county fair. Often there are livestock shows. Pigs are cleaned and groomed to be judged. The best pigs win ribbons or other awards. They are beautiful pigs. It's fun to watch piglets romp about. They are cute and lovable with their curly tails, their flat pink snouts, and their noisy squeals and grunts. Soon they will grow to be big, big pigs. Oink! Oink, oink, oink. The ancient Egyptians used pigs to help them plant crops. Their little hooves made holes just the right size and depth for seeds. There are about 800 million domestic pigs in the world. Pigs were brought to the New World in 1493 by Christopher Columbus on his second voyage. Later, many were imported from England. The record weight for a pig is about 2,000 pounds or 900 kilograms. In the wild, pigs travel in herds of 5 to 20. The males protect the females and their piglets. A pig can run as fast as 30 miles per hour or 48 kilometers. It is a good swimmer too. Wild pigs can be found in most parts of the world. Some wild pigs are the wild boar, the warthog, the forest hog, the river hog, and the barbarossa. All of them can be very dangerous. A pig can live over 15 years. There is a children's story called The Three Little Pigs. And that is the end of Pigs by Gail Gibbons. I wrote this next poem that I'm reading today, boys and girls, and it's called Pigs. Enjoy! Pigs by Robin Adams. Pigs are pink, white, black, or brown. They snort and squeal and make grunting sounds. They eat corn on the cob, but mostly slop. And we eat their bacon, ham, and chops. Pigs have snouts instead of noses and wallow in mud from their heads to their toeses. Their tails are curly, they have perky ears, and mama sows love their piglet dears. The third and final book I'm reading today, boys and girls, is called Pigs Aplenty, Pigs Galore. This is actually a poem written by David McPhail. It's whimsical, fun, and humorous. I know you'll enjoy it. Pigs Aplenty, Pigs Galore. Written and illustrated by David McPhail. Pigs Aplenty, Pigs Galore. Written and illustrated by David McPhail. Scholastic Incorporated. For Jack. Good friend, true poet. Late one night as I sat reading, I thought I heard the sound of feeding. Munch, 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 slurp, 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 crunch, 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 burp, burp, burp. Through the kitchen door I crept, barely watching where I stepped. A crash, a bang, a shout, a yell. I slipped on something, then I fell. I landed on a pile of pigs, some eating dates, some eating figs. In the cupboards, on the floor, pigs aplenty, pigs galore. Black pigs, white pigs, brown and pink pigs, making oatmeal in the sink pigs. Pigs in tutus, pigs in kilts, pigs on skateboards, pigs on stilts. Pigs from England, pigs from France, pigs in just their underpants. The king of pigs, the piggy queen, the biggest pigs I've ever seen. Pigs arrive by boat, by plane, a bus pulls up, and then a train. A band strikes up, a piggy sings. Then at 10, the doorbell rings. Someone yells, the pizza's here. 
and all the pigs begin to cheer. Flying pizzas fill the air. One goes splat against my chair. The piggy piggies eat their fill. I get nothing, just the bill. I've had enough, I scream and shout. Get out, you pigs, you pigs, get out. Please let us stay, the piggies cry. Don't make us go, don't say goodbye. You can stay, I tell them all, but sweep the floor and scrub the wall. I give them brooms, a pail, a mop. Now sweep and scrub till I say stop. The piggies work and when they're done, upstairs they stagger one by one. They brush their teeth and comb their tails, then wash their snouts and clean their nails. The pigs and I climb into bed. I plump the pillows, plop my head. I close my eyes and try to sleep. Before too long, I'm dreaming deep. Of pigs and pigs and pigs some more. Of pigs aplenty, pigs galore. And that is the end of Pigs Aplenty, Pigs Galore, written and illustrated by David McPhail. I've had so much fun today, boys and girls, reading stories about pigs and being back on the farm. Next week, we'll have stories about cows and about goats. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, you can do so. Just tap the word subscribe right there and tap the bell so you'll be notified of all the latest videos with stories and poems from Reading with Mrs. Adams. One truth I want to leave you with today, boys and girls, is that God loves you so much. So dare to dream the impossible because all things are possible with God. I love you. Until next time, goodbye.